Hello fellow iMac lovers. Today I have some good news and some bad news regarding the iMac video card bake. If you've not seen my first uh, videos on this subject, uh, you can check some links down in the text description below. I have bake number one, bake number two, and then I have a follow-up video that I made in January, uh, January 2nd, 2020, at which time I reported that I had gotten two and a half years of continuous use out of my second bake. So let me give you the good news first. The good news is, is that even to this day, I would still emphasize that the naysayers are wrong. There are some people out there who says, who say it's a crazy idea. The, and admittedly, it seems like it is. I'm an electrical engineer and it seems like a foolish idea at first, but there are no electrolytic capacitors, no fluid filled capacitors on the board that would be damaged by the heat. And the bake is not going to melt off all of the components so that they're gonna fall off or shift around the board. I know that from personal experience. And also, if you look at the comments under each of my bake number one, bake number two videos, you'll see hundreds upon hundreds of comments and the vast majority of people who try the bake find success and they're not reporting any type of craziness like that. Uh, it is unconventional though, and so that's why a lot of people think it's just a bad idea. It's not a matter of reballing the chip though. Many people think it is, but it's not. It's, it's the heat. Uh, repairing something inside the chip. I've never broke open the chip, so I don't know what's actually being fixed, but uh, I do know that the bake does work. I saw lots of YouTube videos and read other people's experiences before trying my very first bake, which is what encouraged me to give it a try. I had nothing to lose, right? That's the point. I had nothing to lose. And uh, even though my first bake only lasted four months, I think that had to do with my thermal paste job now that I reflect on it. But uh, regardless, my second bake, again, um, lasted a considerable amount of time. And that leads me to the bad news. The bad news is that it lasted until last night. And as of last night, it was two years and almost nine months of continuous daily use, including the weekends, that this machine has been in operation after my second bake. And I had used a fan control app to keep all three fans, not just one, but all three fans, running at a minimum 2000 RPM speed, which means if the computer needs to go higher in terms of fan speed because it's really hot it will do so but it will not reduce it below the 2000 rpm and my thinking was maybe if i uh, kept the fans running higher than normal then it might run cooler and maybe it would last longer but really i never went into this with the expectation that the bake would last longer than a brand new card and i know that after i purchased this machine in november 2009 about three years later, the card died. I took it into Apple, they replaced the video card and then started working again. That video card almost to the day lasted only three years and then died. So I, I kind of knew from that experience, maybe you're different, okay? Maybe you've gotten more than three years out of it, but in my own personal experience, I had no expectations beyond the three years that I had experienced. And uh, this bake, two years, nine months, it wasn't quite three years like I'd hoped, but it's pretty close, <laughs> pretty close. And so that is the bad news. Now, just to show you, I'm gonna push the power button. You hear the startup bong, right? But you see nothing on the screen. I'll just give it a few seconds here just, just to show you that the, sometimes, you know, the iMac, even just in its normal state, will give you a, bla a black screen for a while before it shows you anything, but you can see it's not doing anything. Now, last night when I tried this, it would give me the startup bong uh, and it would flash the backlight. It was like less than a half second, boom, it would go on and then go off. And so what I did is I pulled the power cord. Uh, of course, I pushed, it, pushed and held the power button until it powered down. And then I pulled out the power cord and I left it for an hour to cool down. I plugged in the power cord. And when you plug in the power cord, it, it will automatically try to boot. So I could hear the startup chime and that time the backlight came on for a few seconds, but then turned off. And I put a flashlight on it and I couldn't see anything on the LCD, which proves it's not, it's not simply a backlight problem. It is the video card again that is, has gone down. Uh, so that is um, the bad news. And um, do I have any regrets? No, I don't, I don't. And I'm not gonna take down my videos either because I think it, it all boils down to what is it worth to you? Chances are, if you're watching this video, and if you've, especially if you've watched my other two videos, 
Um, you're probably not fabulously wealthy. <laughs> if you were fabulously wealthy, you would probably have already purchased a brand new uh, 2020 iMac by now. Maybe even if you're that wealthy, you might have an iMac Pro or even, goodness gracious, the, the top end $50,000 Mac Pro, right? Um, but chances are you're not in that category. So you're here to more economically find a way to resolve the problem. And you know that taking it into Apple isn't gonna work anymore because it's obsolete. They don't have the parts anymore. And then getting on eBay with all the sharks there, right? Trying to get as much money out of you as they possibly can. You're gonna be paying hundreds of dollars for a replacement card. And you know from my other videos and what I've just said, even a brand new card probably isn't gonna last you more than three years. So is it really worth to pay all those hundreds of dollars for a replacement card? My opinion, no, no. It's not, especially since those cards are not brand new either. So they probably wouldn't even last you two years, my guess. Um, by the way, this uh, affliction, I guess I could say, uh, is plaguing the 2009 27-inch iMac, the 2010 and 2011 models. I've also received some replies in the comments to say that some people baked their 2008 model iMacs video card and it worked for them. I've also had some people say it works for the 21.5-inch version as well. But uh, from 2012 and onward, you're not able to remove the video card. So, uh, and also, also those newer video cards don't have this problem anyway, so it doesn't matter. So these are, this bake really applies to older model IMAX, uh, but don't let my first bake video title fool you. It's not exclusive to the 2009 27 inch only. So about 2008 through 2011, 21.5, inch to the 27 inch, uh, the bake will apply. Now, this video, what I want to do with this video is just to report what I've just reported, uh, that the bake lasted only two years and about nine months. But I also am going to bake the video card again, because uh, like you, I'm not in a good financial position now, and uh, I'll spare you all the details of that, but uh, this is our family computer. We have other computers, thankfully, uh, my wife has her iPhone to fall back on to do her email. Uh, my children have 2017 uh, edition uh, MacBook Airs that they can continue to do their homework on. And I have a mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, which I use to edit all my YouTube videos on. So we have those machines to fall back on, but uh, still, this is a very, very widely used by my family computer and uh, if I was in a better financial position, I might be willing to consider buying a new one because it has its advantages in terms of performance. Believe me, it does. But um, I'm going to bake it again. And, you know, even if, you're, even if you're rich, you still might not want to throw these machines away. It still might be a benefit to you to fix it up. Maybe you want to fix it up to give it away to someone. Obviously, you wouldn't be really a true friend to give them a broken machine, right? So you want to fix it up. And the bake uh, is one way to do that. And I think it's, it's a good way to do it. So what I'm going to do in this video is not remake my first bake or second bake videos because even though I could probably do it a lot better job of it now, I, I don't want to um, make this video too, too long. So I'm just going to show you bits and pieces. For example, how dusty and dirty the internals are. Since I used the, the fan app to run the fans at 2000 RPM constantly, as long as the machine was on, um, I'm guessing there's probably more dust bunnies inside than there was uh, the last time I opened it two years and nine months ago. I'm going to show you that. And I'm not going to show you all of the disassembly details because my other two videos show that in detail. But I will show you the K4 and K5 Pro thermal paste how that has fared over the last two years and nine months. I'm, I'm sure that some of you are curious, has it hardened like a rock? Is it still liquidy? And uh, I'm curious myself. So we'll take a look at that. And then once I get it baked and all put back together, we're gonna, I'll have the video camera rolling and um, we'll see if a third bake works or not. So let's get started. Here are all the dust bunnies in the circular vent just above the power cord. And here. 
here are the dust bunnies behind the ram door. Oh my. <laughs> Look at all those. Well, here it is with the screen removed. Again, this is two years and nine months. If we zoom in here, of course, the majority of the dust is accumulated in the area of the fans. You can see it on the cables here. Some dust bunnies there. Remember, there's a fan in the middle. And the other fan is over here. So the fans need a good blowing. But it's not as bad as I thought. It looks, well, fairly clean up top. The SSD is there. I don't see any dust bunnies in that area. And remember, I had all three fans blowing. So not too bad in terms of dust, although I do need to blow out through the vents at the bottom. And you should too, if you're doing a bake. Here's the video card removed. I haven't disassembled them yet. I just wanted to show you from the side how the paste looks. You can still see the th thermal pads are making excellent contact there. You see the white color in there. You can see the gap is fairly noticeable there. It's at least two millimeters. And this, uh, this thermal pad is, is closing the gap. It's, I didn't put quite as much on that one it seems, but it's still making contact with the heat sink. Okay, so let's now take it off. There's a good seal on there, that's for sure. Uh, well, you can see that if I touch it, it is, uh, it feels very moist, very moist. I can see a little moisture on my finger, so even after two years and nine months, it is not hard as a rock. Certainly not. And it looks like it, you can see the indentations there. A little bit of cracks in there, but for the most part, it seems like it did its job well. And here is the card. So you can see there's some spillover, but it's not electrically conductive, so it doesn't matter. Um, that hole doesn't matter because it was making contact that just peeled off. But yeah, you can see it's, uh, making good contact there. The K4 Pro, you can see there was a good amount of spillover, but again, not electrically conductive, so that won't matter. And uh, the K4 Pro, again, it's it's not hard as, well, it's, it's firmed up quite a bit, but I can still feel a lot of moisture in it. So I'm gonna clean it off and bake it. Here is the cleaned off card and heat sink after my bake. It's all ready for the paste. I still have my K5 Pro and K4 Pro from two years and nine months ago, but especially for the GPU chip, you're really not supposed to use old thermal paste. Probably the manufacturers say more than a year, they don't want you to use it. They probably want to say that so that you buy, you buy new paste, but there's some logic behind it. However, the K5 Pro has been sealed up pretty good. It comes in these chapstick holders here and they're sealed pretty well. And since the K5 Pro is on the memory chips, which don't get as hot as the GPU, and uh, since I'm a poor man right now, I'm gonna use the K5 Pro even though 
it's not brand new and I'm just going to refrain from using the K4 Pro because I still have Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut that's less than a year old from my MacBook Pro 2015 repasting and I have a video on that I'll link for you in the text description below so this is still fairly new and it's also the best non-electrically conductive thermal paste you can buy so I'm going to put this on the GPU and here's the application of K5 Pro on the memory chips and Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut in the X pattern on the GPU. Okay, it's mostly reassembled, all except for the front glass. And uh, now I'm going to switch on power and see what happens. Well... What's gonna happen next? Oh, Apple logo. Remember the backlight wouldn't even come on before. And we see that it's booting. So of course I'm gonna still do some more testing, but it looks like a third bake has worked. It's taking a little time to boot here, but that's typical for this machine. And remember the backlight would not even come on, just flicker on before, so. See if it boots here to the desktop. And it looks like it's going to go. What do you know? And there you have it, folks. Working once again. Hopefully we can get another two years and nine months, if not three. Please leave your questions down in the comments. Look forward to hearing from you. Best wishes to one and all. Thanks for watching.